pinch of this, a teaspoon of that. You know, spices, they can change the profile of your food. But do you know the secrets to recreating your favorite flavors that you get out at the restaurants at home? I don't, you don't. but I will soon because we have personal chef Bill Collins from ChefBill.com. He's joining us now with kind of like a spices 101 lesson, right? Chef it, secrets. Absolutely. It's a good idea to keep some of the basics on hand, but also it's a good idea to understand generally what seasonings and spices go with what cuisines or what types of foods. It sounds like it's complicated, but it can really make it simple and then you can experiment from there. So it's very straightforward. You want to start with the traditional, the good old salt and pepper? You know, it's always good. You always want to have salt and pepper. That's the basic. Even though it doesn't qualify as an herb or a, a seasoning, uh, it's something that brings out the flavor. Salt is a flavor enhancer. So if you have food and it's too salty, you put too much salt in. <laughs> but it just elevates all the other flavors. So uh, there's table salt, there's kosher salt, and I like to have freshly ground uh, black pepper on hand all the time too. And I think a lot of, you know, cooking these days is changing a little bit to meet different people's heart and health concerns. So a lot of times if you use these spices effectively, you can use less salt, which can go a long way. You're absolutely right because so many people do have to watch their salt intake. So rather than just take something out, how do you compensate and still make the food taste well, taste good? And you're absolutely right. And so there's so many spices and flavors you can and you lift it up with. I have a question for you. Fresh ground black pepper versus already ground, you, you buy it pre-ground, should I say. Yes. What is the difference in terms of flavor? Uh, well, it's, uh, oftentimes, uh, the flavor will be pretty much identical. So uh, it, what I like to think of is when you buy the seasonings, think about where you're buying them from. Uh, either go to uh, a place like Penzi's, uh, which is actually online uh, from uh, Milwaukee, or go to a local market that has a high turnover. I don't like going to uh, shop for spice a place that have the word salvage or pharmacy in the name of the <laughs> shop, because that's not really their main business. Mm -hmm. So this way, uh, uh, you can get the flavors you want and the same thing applies to pepper so uh, if you get the the ground pepper uh, that's that's just fine you're not doing anything wrong by buying it already ground the advantage of going with the grinder you get bigger grind and you get the different grinds and it can really actually visually as well as mouth feel have a different effect on the flavor so you're fine to get both okay well and I know that you've said before uh, sometimes if you buy things in the big leaves or for example we have a spice here if you then crush it up yes it, it's kind of a uh, exudes more flavor it does and actually this is a good example uh, this is a dried rose Rosemary, and when you get the rosemary, uh, you can see, you know, in the jar it comes like that. And this, these are the leaves of dried rosemary. Now, uh, because it, it's such a needle type thing, uh, those are the leaves actually. Uh, when you cook with it, oftentimes it's still very sticky and pointy, mm -hmm. and it doesn't give up its flavor as much. I hijacked my wife's coffee grinder, <laughs> and it'll never taste the same. And again. you definitely did a hijack. You didn't borrow it. I she, didn't borrow. She didn't really know. She did not know. Uh oh. Well, she had cumin uh -oh. coffee one morning, and <laughs> I, I thought it was amusing. She had. No. Oh, and then you sleep on the couch and it's a whole it, it, mix it, up. It ultimately, I, she got a new coffee grinder out of it. <laughs> However, when you look at the rosemary, the thing about that is it's so grind up, it's a powder, you get more flavor from it and more quickly. Uh, so if you throw it into a soup or stew or in roast potatoes, uh, you get more of that flavor than you would just, in, in this case, from uh, the rosemary uh, flowers uh, like that, the leaves like that. So that does, you can do a mortar and pestle, uh, hijack oh, the coffee grinder. Oh, that's too much work. Hijack the coffee hijack grinder. Hijack Coffee coffee grinder. Grinder. Yeah, and I think it's it, you're right with uh, sprinkling it with the powdered version, it, and it's a lot easier to. Taste it the sure is. Yep. Let's start different uh, cuisines, different traditions. Here we have kind of the Mediterranean spice blend. Exactly, and uh, some of the basics. And these are some of the basics. Uh, it's always good to have in your kitchen. That's got basil, uh, which is actually uh, Mediterranean, very Italian. Basilico, basilica. Comes from the word uh, basil oh, comes really? from that. Uh, it really does. This, uh, these potatoes are great. And those are the rosemary <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> oh, and so you've also got <laughs> oregano uh, and thyme and those uh, and rosemary and those are all kind of considered from the Mediterranean parts mm -hmm. of the world. However, what was spice trades way back a zillion years ago? Uh, a lot of these cross over different cuisines as well. But if you were to say Mediterranean, European, uh, and therefore a, a lot of it, some American, you have those spices and those can be the basics. Now I'm looking at a lot of these. You have the basil, you got the parsley. When you grow your own, because I have a little herb garden growing right now in yes. my home, how do you dry them out and put them into this? Because obviously I'm going to have, hopefully, if all goes well, <laughs> way too much basil to deal with. So I want to start drying some of it out. How do I do that? Hang them up around your house. And cool. it's really that simple. Just air dry them. And uh, uh, you can even do them in, in the oven to really dry them out. But just, you know, uh, uh, you got either uh, uh, clothes pin them around and they will dry, air dry over time. Nice decoration. Yeah, I was gonna it, say, it is going to love that. Exactly, yeah. because uh, oftentimes you have so much fresh 
herbs uh, around your house. It's just too much to use. You can also, uh, in keeping them fresh, uh, uh, chop them up or and freeze them, and they will last quite a bit of time. Is there a shelf life on that? Out of curiosity, when you dry them out yourself? Well, I don't know about the drying out yourself, but the general rule of thumb on these is uh, uh, six to 12 months uh, for, now we all, everybody, I've been guilty of this. You look at something, boy, I've had that for three or four years mm -hmm. or Definitely. more. <laughs> and so, uh, but the flavor uh, does go down in time. Now, another rule of thumb when you have dried versus fresh is the dry will have more of an intense flavor. So the rule of thumb is you, if it calls for fresh basil, uh, a teaspoon use half a teaspoon of dry basil yeah. it, but that's a rule of thumb you can just kind of uh, measure it uh, mm -hmm. differently. Now Chef Bill, let's head down the line a little bit let's start talking about this seems like um Tex-Mex kind of spices, chili-related spices. Exactly. And those uh, in that part of the world, uh, the hotter foods, uh, uh, they, they come out. You know, in the cuisine, you've got the chili powders, which is the dried chilies, and the peppers. You've got some uh, red pepper flakes, and also that's seen a lot in Italian cuisine as well. So it crosses over. That's true. Cumin, cinnamon. Cinnamon is also very big. You always think of cinnamon as a, as a comforting breakfast food, yeah. but you find it all across the Asia's uh, and down into uh, Latin oh, America. Wow. So, uh, and that's. Uh, uh, so, so all of those things combine to give you the sharper flavors as well. So those are good for like, um, like chili and all that. Exactly, kind of dishes. It, homemade fajitas, all of that. Absolutely. Oh, yes. And now, lastly, we have what seems like more of the Asian spice section that we'd have here. Exactly. So uh, ginger is very big in that part of the world. Again, with cinnamon, uh, curry powders, and curry is really. If you ask five families for their uh, own homemade curry, you'll get probably six different answers <laughs> uh, because they're peppers, they're gingers, there's cardamom. There's so many things that go into it. We can buy, you can buy all over the world, a curry powder. So there isn't any one thing that defines curry powder. And you'll find that you know, through India, uh, Southeast Asia, into uh, China. So it's not just an Indian thing. Same thing with uh, ginger. You find that throughout so much of the Eastern, uh, of the Europe, uh, Asian parts of the world. Now, lastly, Chef Bill, real quick, we're unfortunately we're out of time, but you've jazzed up these potatoes. We've been snacking on them the whole they time. They are so let, good. Let the cat out of the bag. How'd you make them so good? Uh, what, these were just made with olive oil, salt, and pepper, olive oil, salt, and pepper, and rosemary. I and you can now. tell that the difference is the rosemary ones yeah. have, it, it pops a bit more in your mouth. And rosemary can be a very strong flavor. And that's why I like to make that with just a bit with the fresh rosemary and the powdered rosemary that I ground up. And it makes it nicely different. What oh. a difference just a little bit of spice makes. Chef Bill, so thank good. you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much. These potatoes, gosh, I'm, I can have them for dinner. Let's just eat them until there's no more.